In chapter 6, we learned about the visual system, which is by far the most thoroughly studied sensory system. It is also the most well understood. The more that we discover about other sensory systems, the more we realize that each of those is organized in a very similar fashion to the visual system. This chapter will focus on the remaining four of the five sensory systems, the auditory, somatosensory, olfactory, and gustatory. As noted in chapter 6, the visual system is composed of the receptor site, which would be the retinas, the sensory relay station, which would be the thalamus, in this specific case, the lateral geniculate thalamus, and then eventually it makes its way over to the occipital lobe, which is the area of the cortex that would perceive the information received by the eyes. From there, it would make use of the secondary sensory cortex before making its way to the association cortex. Please note that the sensory system organization for all other sensory modalities is similar to this. And if we work our way from receptors to the most complex or the last stop, if you will, it would be starting with the primary after the thalamus, going over to the secondary, and ending at the association cortex. The interactions among the three types of sensory cortex, primary, secondary, and association, are characterized by three major principles. The first one is that they are organized in a hierarchical fashion. Perhaps it would help to think of a business model. If we think of a place where they sell coffee, and this particular place where they sell coffee has a lot of franchises all over the country or the world, it would be pointless to have to make a call to the CEO if there were to be a need to reimburse a customer for a cup of coffee. The business would run more smoothly if the individuals at that specific site would be able to make that decision without consulting with the CEO. However, those customers and the people dealing with the customers, we would find that those would be a lot more easily replaced than replacing a CEO. Same thing with the hierarchy of our sensory modalities. As we go up, meaning to the association cortex, secondary and primary, the specificity and complexity begins to increase with each level. And we find that there's a higher level damage, typically consists of more specific and complex deficits. In response to our eye or relation to our eye, if we were to damage our eye or the retina, we would simply, if possible, be able to do a laser surgery or wear eyeglasses. However, if we damage the part of the brain, it starts getting more complex. And we start developing or seeing disorders such as prosopagnosia. As you may remember, it's the inability to recognize faces. And echinotopsia, which is another neurological disorder that we looked at in chapter 6. Sensation and perception would be the two ends of end products of how we would process information. The sensation would be the lower order process. In this particular case, they would be the individuals dealing with customers directly. Or in the case of our eyes, it would be our retina. The perception would be the higher order process, or the CEO, or the executives of the business. And this is where we would interpret the stimulus, or in other words, process, or perceive the information. The second major principle of the sensory structures is functional segregation. It was once assumed that the primary, secondary, and association areas of the cortex were each functionally homogeneous, that is, it was assumed that all of the cortex at any given level of the sensory hierarchy acted together to perform the same function. Research has shown that functional segregation, that is to say that they are separated, 
is seen rather than functional homogeneity. That is to say that all three levels would be the same or of the same kind. The last of the three major components is parallel processing. It was once believed that the different levels of sensory hierarchy were connected in a serial fashion. In a serial system, information would flow among the components over just one pathway. Think of the Christmas lights that may just follow along one single pathway. And if you look at the old model of Christmas lights, if you break one of those light bulbs, then the entire set is defective. Recent evidence suggests that sensory system is actually more along the lines of parallel systems, which would allow information to flow through the component of multiple pathways. Parallel systems feature parallel processing is basically the simultaneous analysis of a signal in different ways by the multiple parallel pathways of a neural network. Please note that there is a belief that there are two fundamentally different kinds of parallel streams of analysis in our sensory system. One that would handle the influencing of our behavior without our conscious awareness, and the other one that would influence our behaviors by engaging our conscious awareness. We will discuss this a bit more later. Here you can see the different layers in the hierarchy of the organization of all sensory systems. At the very bottom you would have the receptors and again looking at the sensory modality we've looked at so far it would be the eyes or the photoreceptor cells. From there it goes up the ladder and ranking and it then reaches the thalamus. From there it would synapse over to the primary sensory cortex, synapsing over to the secondary and making use of association cortex. Please note that the same hierarchical organization will hold true for all remaining sensory systems we'll look in this chapter. I'd like us to look at the left side of the screen where we look at the former model. This is what we used to believe. We used to think that the hierarchy we had from the receptors to association cortex was functionally homogeneous, meaning that it was all the same and that it followed a serial pathway, meaning one single pathway of neural networks would allow us to reach the association cortex. We now know that it is something along the lines of a current model. And we look at the hierarchical, functionally segregated parallel system, meaning that they're not the same, they're segregated and they're allocated in specific parts of the brain We've confirmed this by looking at individuals who have sustained damage at different parts and we see how their deficits are not the same, they're different. And we also know that the information runs in a parallel fashion rather than serial. Remember the Christmas lights analogy where if one light bulb goes out then the entire thing is out? This would be that type of system. But now that we know that our, because of neuroplasticity, we know that if even if we damage a few of the receptor cells, there are alternative ways to reach higher levels in the hierarchy and eventually making it to the top.